Okay, now let's imagine that we have an airplane that's climbing. What we want to know is what is the rate of climb? And it turns out that the rate of climb is very closely related to another thing that we would like to know, which is the power available. Okay, so we're going to talk about rate of climb and power available. So let's imagine we have our aircraft. And we're going to put it at a climb angle today. Let's draw the wings. Okay, so we have an aircraft, and now let's do it this way. Here's the horizontal, okay? But now what we're going to say is that the aircraft is not traveling horizontal. Instead, we're going to say that the aircraft is moving at some uh, climb. Uh, well, it's moving at a velocity that is oriented at some angle from the horizontal. Okay, and we're going to call this angle the climb angle. So our aircraft is climbing. All right, and then as usual, we're going to have some other things here. So I'm going to do these in blue just to avoid confusion. Okay, so we have uh, also the fuselage reference line, which I guess I'll do in yellow. Okay, so the fuselage reference line comes out uh, looking something like this. Okay. And uh, then we have our thrust. Okay, so the force is all doing blue here. So let's say our thrust is angled like this. And again, I want to point out these angles are exaggerated. Okay, and then our lift is going to be perpendicular to the free stream velocity. Our drag is going to be parallel to the free stream velocity, something like that. And then our weight is going to point straight down. Okay, so we're a little bit more complicated here. Let me just label everything for clarity. So here we have the thrust required. Excuse me, not the thrust required. In this case, we have the thrust available. Okay, so this is the actual thrust that the aircraft is flying with. Here we have the lift, here we have the drag, and here we have the weight, and this is our velocity. Okay, there's a couple more angles I'm going to re uh, review here. So this angle here is the angle of attack, and this angle here is the thrust angle, alpha sub t. All right. So let's do a force balance here. Um, I'm going to do it in blue so it matches our force. So if we sum the forces uh, in the direction of drag, okay, then our drag has to equal the thrust available times the uh, cosine of the thrust angle, cos alpha t. Uh, and then we'll have minus, there's a component in the weight direction here. And this angle here, if I can draw it, is the same as the climb angle, right? So this is minus W sine of gamma. Okay, now let's do the lift. So our lift has to equal, well, the first thing is W cosine of gamma. And we will subtract off a component for thrust here. So that's thrust available times sine alpha t. Okay, so one thing I want to point out here is that what we have here is smaller than our steady level drag. So if you'll recall, in steady level flight, I'm going to just do SL drag was equal to the thrust times the cosine alpha t. So um, there wasn't this extra term on the end. Okay, so this is for a zero climb angle, right? Okay, so that's important to recognize. The other thing is we, we can actually find an expression for the climb rate. 
Okay, so we have our velocity, um, and we have, let me draw this here. So we have, I'll do it right here. We have our velocity, V, but this velocity is going to have two components, which I'll do in green. Okay, we're going to have a horizontal component, and we have a vertical component. So our horizontal component, or our vertical component, was, is what we call the climb rate. So it's the velocity upward. And this angle in between, of course, is the climb angle. So very easily we can, we can find an expression for the climb rate, and that's just Vc equals V sine of gamma. All right, so this is the climb rate. Now we can uh, we can we can rewrite this by saying uh, the let's see so taking our drag equation we can solve for gamma okay because we want to we want to get rid of gamma here and write it in terms of our lift and drag or in this case our drag and thrust okay so if we take the drag equation and rearrange uh, we're going to find, I'm going to bring this down here, and what this implies then is that sine of gamma equals thrust available cos alpha t minus drag divided by the weight. And now if we plug that back into our expression for the climb rate, so plug that in here, then we come out with Vc equals the velocity, that's the total velocity, times the thrust available cosine of alpha t minus drag divided by w. All right, but we're not done, okay? So there's a couple of simplifications we can make here. So if we look at our aircraft and it's flying uh, we can recognize a couple of things. First, for most aircraft, the thrust to weight ratio is pretty small. Okay, This means that the aircraft weighs a whole lot more than the thrust that it generates. Now this makes sense, of course, for like a commercial aircraft where we want to fly essentially with as little thrust possible. Right? We want to be as efficient as possible, use as little energy as possible to get from point A to point B within within limits, of course. For military aircraft, you might find that the thrust to weight ratio is actually pretty high, close to one or more than one. And what this means then, you can imagine, is if we have enough thrust that it's more than our weight, then the aircraft could go vertical and fly vertical. Now that's not true for most aircraft. So in general, and I'm going to write this down, so in general, the ratio of thrust available to weight is going to be much less than one. Okay, it's going to be really small. What that means then is that the aircraft, in order to maintain steady level flight or a climb rate, has to fly at, or in order to maintain a climb rate, the aircraft has to fly at a small climb angle, right? Because you, if you if you fly at a high climb angle, you need more and more thrust, and eventually you'll need as much thrust as weight. So what this means then is that we can, we can use here for our drag, instead of having gamma in there, like I said, we don't want gamma in there. Um, we can say if gamma is small, then we assume that the drag is essentially the steady level flight drag. Okay, so this just comes from plugging in small gamma here in the drag equation. And what you get is drag equals thrust cosine alpha t, which of course is our steady level flight drag. Now I want to point out, this is just a reminder, this approximation here is conservative, meaning we are assuming that there's more drag than there really is. And that's how we want to keep it. We, you know, we, we, we want this to be a conservative estimate. Okay. 
And again, that comes from, from this equation. Notice that if we have a climb angle, we have less drag. Okay? So, uh, that's one assumption we make. And then the other assumption we make is one that we've made for several of, of the things that we've done. And that's our alpha t is small as well. And what that gives us then, if we plug all of this in, so we're going to say small gamma and small alpha t, and we're going to plug that into our expression for the climb rate. And what we come out then with is vc equals, and remember, uh, so we have small alpha t, so this cosine is going to go away. Um, and sorry, one more thing to point out that I that I forgot to point out here. If we are in steady level flight, then this thrust available can be rewritten as the thrust required, right? Because you have to fly with the thrust required to maintain steady level flight. Okay? All right. Now let's plug all this back in. Sorry for that little detour. So we have V times, and then here the cosine alpha T is going to go to 1. And so we'll have thrust available minus, and then drag is the thrust required times cosine alpha t. Cosine alpha t goes to 1. So we just have thrust required over w. And of course, thrust times velocity is power. So what this really comes out to be then is that the climb rate is the power available minus the power required divided by the weight. Okay, Or in other words, the excess power divided by the weight. Now again, just to be clear, this is assuming small thrust angle and small gamma. So I'm going to write those underneath here. Small alpha t, small gamma, which are good approximations for most aircraft. Now, uh, before, we, before we end here, let me point one thing out. So the power required, we know. Okay, so this, this came from an equation. So... Um, we bring that down here, and I'm going to write it out again, just as a reminder. So the power required is, uh, it's kind of a hairy equation, if you'll remember. So we had CD naught times rho V cubed, all divided by 2 times the wing loading, W over SW, plus CD naught L times V, plus 2 times the wing loading, W over SW, over pi E RA rho V, all times W. Okay, so we know that. We've, we've derived that. This is review for us. However, the power available is something new to us. And the power available is something that comes generally from experiment. Okay, so it's something that uh, is done by the people who make the engines on aircraft. And what they'll give is something that looks like this. Sorry, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more here. They'll give a chart or a table that has values for the power available as a function of some parameter. In this case, we'll consider airspeed. So velocity. And uh, this is thrust, or this is power available. And what this generally looks like is something like this, where you have different amounts of power available for different throttle settings. Okay, so here you'd have like, let's see, let's draw one more. You know, here you'd have like a throttle setting of 0 0.5, and here you'd have a throttle setting of 1, right? And all of these in between are like, are like 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and so forth. Okay? And this is, this, is, this is what they'd give. And now this changes with altitude as well. So there's a lot that goes into it. But at any rate, your power available generally comes from experiment. And so just to scroll up one last time, uh, just to recap, the, the uh, rate of climb can be approximated as 
the power available minus the power required divided by the weight, where the power required comes from an equation, something we know, and the power available generally comes from experiment.